I was cleaning it and I still am. I'm the same size. Trouble is that my family's still And I just want to I pray if I sit there, I'll stay overnight too. I'll hear you do. I am done.
two, come now, font of every blessing. Please stand if you are.
righteousness is as dirty rags. We are not worthy to enter God's dwelling. But God came to dwell with us through the body and being of Jesus Christ, his son. Jesus came to be with us, among us, within us, and is for us. To hear the good news, in Jesus we are forgiven and we are made new. Thanks be to God. We now in response, let us pray to pray that Jesus himself help us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will the children please come forward? These are the things that are in the Beatitudes. 
it says, be merciful to people. Be kind to people when they're hurting. You know, when you're hurting, it's really good when somebody is kind to you. I bet your mom or dad or your grandparents, they come up and they hug you or they kiss you when you're hurting. Mm -hmm. When you're sick and not feeling well, they help give you medicine and make sure that you're taken care of. But then also Jesus says, be peacemakers. So do people sometimes get into arguments? And so, if they keep going and going, is there is it important there to be a peacemaker to make them stop? Uh -huh. Maybe help to talk about things and see if they can come up with some solutions. And then Jesus also said, have an attitude of pure thoughts. You know, sometimes we can really get lost in thinking about things that are not really good. Jesus said, I want you to really look at what you're thinking about and let's think good things. And then he says, I want you to have an attitude of doing what's right. So, and then he said, when you're sad, God's there sitting beside you because he wants to comfort you. So, Jesus really gives us good recipes for how to live in joy no matter what's going on in our lives. So let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the Beatitudes. Please help us to follow your recipe for a happy and joyful life. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
taken from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 5, verses 1 to 12. It's found on page 1501 in your pew Bible. Let us listen to the Word of God. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. And his disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. And for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is God's word to us today. In what shall we come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? This is found in Isaiah in Micah 6. Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves and your old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with thousands of rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? Well, today, we don't have to give these offerings, but what we can give to God is our tithe, our offerings, and the commitment of our very lives.
always be foolish enough to offer our gifts to you, generous God, for you to use them to bring justice as we obey your command to act justly. May these offerings also enable us to love and show mercy and for us all to walk humbly before you, our God. We present these offerings and pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. They will do what is right or 
righteous. They'll do the right thing. And they will speak truth from their heart. Their tongue will not utter slander. And they will do no harm or evil to their neighbor or friends. And then David goes on and he says, not only that, but look at the character of the person, even among difficult people. <clears throat> they do not take up the reproach of their neighbors or cast slurs on others. They honor those that fear the Lord. They keep their oath, even when it hurts. And they do not change their minds. They lend money to the poor without interest, and they do not accept bribes. And then David ends with the blessing of what occurs when a person will live like this. Those who do these things will never be shaken. They will not be moved. And one of my commentators, uh, David Gusick, in the Blue Letter Bible said, if you look at this scripture, it is not only encompassed the Old Testament, which was the Old Testament covenant, that the stability of life is a blessing <coughs> given to those who are obedient to God, in other words, those that keep the law. But he also goes on and says, look, if you look at the new covenant, there's a promise of stability and security given to those who trust, who have faith, and that this faith and trust is evident in the life lived in general obedience. You see, this idea is that we are never moved. That it is the righteous one who will be the guest in the tent of God forever. In our second reading known as the Beatitudes, there are, there are some that even think that Jesus was really reciting Psalm 15 and then adding the difference that it makes under the new covenant. But once again, we see Jesus turning everything upside down. Or really, rather, he's turning things right side up. As he gives what is called the Declaration of the Kingdom. You know, just like we had the Declaration of Independence in our history as a nation, Jesus is giving the declaration of the kingdom of God. How to live as a citizen, as a kingdom of heaven, even while we're here on this earth. How God's rule and reign affects our lives. And again, it's not so much of what we do, but to be who we are. And that to be in Jesus, then we begin to reflect his attitudes. You see, Jesus gives us the challenge. Do you have the courage to step out in faith? Do you have the eyes of faith to see the world as he sees it? Will you join him in this radical way of living and seeing the kingdom all around us and embrace his vision for what this world could be like? He is calling us to live the kingdom principles here and now. So, what is it like to live in a world like this? But when we look at this scripture, it begins with the idea of blessings. Now, these are not that we are, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be merciful so that I can get God's blessing. How 
how Jesus wants us to look at this is no, I'm in relationship with Jesus. And this is what happens as the fruit of that relationship. Now, some of these things are different. They could be considered radical. Because what Jesus is spelling out is his new world order for the kingdom of God. Now, I heard it once said that this was the best illustration because of Jesus turning not things upside down, but turning the upside down upright. It's like a thief who has broken into an exclusive store and he's rearranged the price tags. You know, a, <clears throat> a designer purse that would have cost a thousand dollars, well, they put the price tag of five dollars on it. And a five dollar belt, well, it's now priced as two hundred dollars. It was a whole new sense of what is valuable. And in addition, Jesus is dealing with more than just our attitudes. He is saying, this is the entrance into the kingdom of his reign as you are becoming new creatures day by day in Jesus being made new from the inside out now again blessing is not always a word that we're familiar with sometimes we use it a lot of times I know when I go to the store people say have a blessed day but sometimes people will say, well, this could be translated happy. Uh, but people tend to think about happy birthday. But Jesus' intention here was for, to rearrange our thoughts on what is really important and valuable. Now, I found this as far as a a children's rendition of the Beatitudes. That first of all, this would be the value in the world as we know it. It's good to be rich because you can buy whatever you want. It's good to be strong so you can take whatever you want. Uh, you'll also make the team. It's good for winners because they get all the prizes. It's good for the smart because they all get straight A's and get to go to college and get great jobs. It's good to be beautiful. They'll get their pictures in magazines and get to be in movies. And it's good for grown-ups because they get to make all the plans. But Jesus says, in my kingdom, it's good for those who know they do not know everything. They belong in God's world. It's good for those who are terribly sad, for they will be comforted. It's good for those who obey, for they'll be put in charge. It's good for those who don't get justice now, because they will get it. It's good for those who forgive and care about others, because God forgives and cares for them. It is good for those who are pure in heart, for they will see God. It, it's good for the peacemakers, because they'll be praised by their own children. It is good for those who are hurt, because they stand up God's way. They'll be God's heroes, and, and it's good for you. When people come after you because of me, you will be rewarded. So as we look at the Beatitudes, and I'm just going to go through them quickly, but also share a little bit about each one and also share with you some of the message translation on it. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there's more of God and his rule. You see, in, in our world, it's a, um, 
It's one where we tend to follow gurus, a spiritual leader who might be able to know all things and do the right things. And that way we figure that with this kind of knowledge, we might be able to find salvation. What Jesus is telling us here is recognize without God, we're spiritually bankrupt. We must rely on God's strength. We are to rest that God is in control. That in the kingdom of God, the Messiah is in charge. Then Jesus goes on and he says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. You are blessed when you feel that you have lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. See, in our world, we tend to run and avoid pain at all costs. And that many times we try to find happiness by hiding from pain. And even reality at times. But Jesus is saying, this is a radical shift in your thinking. See yourselves as you really are. And see this world as it really is. Recognize that there is sorrow in this world. But the Messiah, Jesus, has come. And he offers redemption now and in the future. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. You're blessed when you're content with just who you are. No more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves as proud owners of everything that can't be bought. You know, in the world, it looks like the proud and the strong are the one that inherit the earth. That the mighty will seize the prize of ruling the planet. That only the clever and confident can hold authority and dominion. That nice people finish last. But Jesus calls us to be meek. To really trust God in our weakness. To trust his plan and his will that he has promised will be accomplished. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They'll be filled. But blessed are you when you work up a good appetite for the things of God. He's food and drink and the best meal you'll ever have. You know, to hunger for things that are right many times in our world is, is a fool's game. That nothing changes, that compromises the name of the game, and to set aside honor and doing right is inconvenient. It's all politics. Quit worrying about what's right and just do what you need to do. Look out for number one. Jesus says no. This is a new way and a new day. And this is, be starved for righteousness, the right thing. Be in right standing with God and a part of his kingdom. And you will be satisfied even now. Blessed are the merciful, where they shall be shown mercy. You're blessed when you care. At the moment of being careful, you yourself will be cared for. You know, at times, we all want justice. We um, don't want any, we take no prisoners. There are slogans of, that are proud and strong and careless, and we condemn others, and we make ourselves feel better by putting other people down. Sometimes, even in sports, we idolize the arrogant, those that are merciless. We idolize fame and wealth and 
we're champions and no time for losers. We look at mercy as a liability that it is too costly and it might prevent us from achieving our goals. But Jesus challenges this thought process. He said, look, mercy is essential. Jesus' very life was all about mercy, God's mercy to us. You see, there is that correlation as well. If you give mercy to others, he says, you'll receive it back. Those who have been forgiven much love even more. So blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and your heart, the right. Then you'll see God in the outside world. See, Jesus wants to give us true joy, true happiness, true purpose, beginning with God's presence in our life. But Jesus condemned the Jewish leaders for their desire to appear pure on the outside but did not look on the inside, knowing that it began with their very hearts. Jesus goes on, he said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. You're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. You know, in the world, many times it is peace um, at any price. Stop all the conflict. It will solve all problems. Use your money and buy peace, you know? And many times we look at the wrong things. Music, meditation, drugs, other things. But Jesus is saying, I'm going to give you true peace. Peace that is different. Peace that I promised I would leave you and give to you, a peace that the world cannot give. Because the kingdom of God is here now in our midst. It's a gift from Jesus that we receive as his adopted children. But blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Persecution drives us even deeper into God's kingdom. And so Jesus is saying, look, you will be different. The world will not understand it. They may put you down, but stand with me. Do what is right, even if it may lean to be lonely at times, being isolated or misunderstood. But know that God's Spirit will always be with us. The Holy Spirit will guide us, comfort us, and lead us. So count yourself blessed every time when people put you down, throw you out, speak lies, or discredit you. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and they're uncomfortable. You can be glad when it all happens. Give a cheer even. For though they don't like it, God says, I do. And all of heaven applauds and know that you're in good company. My prophets and my witnesses have always gotten through this kind of trouble. Well, I was also contemplating about the history of blessing. And you know, we Jesus is saying, if you're in my presence, if you practice being with me, these are things that are going to happen. But I also know that many times we are blessed so that we can be a blessing to others. 
one of my favorite places of, of ministry is the Christian Healing Ministries there in, in Jacksonville, Florida. And they encourage the people that have been through some of the prayer courses there to practice blessing others. And I thought, you know, this is a good thing for us to do. And so we said, especially blessing those in your family. Well, whether it's your your close family or your church family or whatever family. It says these are some of the elements for us to bless others. Give others a meaningful touch. You know, that blesses when we hug each other and show, <coughs> I care about you. You're important to me. Speak messages of blessings to each other. Attach a high value to those around you as you bless them. Even picture a special future to the one that you're blessing. And be an act to have an active commitment to fulfill the blessing in other people's lives. It's also a wonderful thing to pray some of the psalms over people or some of the prayers, Psalm 1 or Psalm 15 that we read, Proverbs 1 or Proverbs 3. But practice blessing, not only letting God bless you, but blessing others around. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, you, the, the God of all the prophets and the God of Jesus, we are reminded today that your blessings do not follow the logic of this world. The world believes that the rich are blessed. But Jesus reminds us it is the poor who are blessed, the poor in spirit, as well as the material poor as well. So today, Lord, we pray for our world, that indeed it would be a just world where people have enough and none are left behind. And Lord, we know that we have a fear of death and facing our own mortality. But you, Jesus, tell us to pray for those who mourn. Help us to walk beside those and mourn with those who are sorrowful. We ask that you would bring healing and wholeness to those that we care about, those who are sick, those who are on our hearts, those that are listening in our world. We ask that you would comfort those who have lost loved ones. We thank you, Jesus, that you bless the meek and that you instruct us to walk in ways of humility. Help us to stand with those <clears throat> who are being oppressed or live out on the margins. Show us your face in the face of others that the world forgets. And Lord, today we do pray that you would put a hunger for and thirst for righteousness, that you would fill our hearts with love and overflow with mercy, that you would give us pure hearts and a vision of your glory. Today, Lord, we, we know that we are so richly blessed. We thank you for the love and joy that you give us. We thank you for the hope that you give us. Help us to be the salt of the earth. Help us to be the light of the world and share with others all that we have received from you, boldly proclaiming the good news of your love and finding the seeds of the kingdom within us and letting your way grow in our lives and throughout the world. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
this morning, we are presented with the banquet table set by Jesus for us. And again, I remind you that this is not just a Presbyterian table, but all who have come to faith in Jesus. So let us prepare our hearts.
feeding us at your table. May we be so full of your joy and your presence in our lives that we will leave this place blessing all we see, letting them know the good news. We have been redeemed. We are beloved. We have been forgiven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is in the garden.
So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.